Hello, hello, my paper peeps. Today I'll be sharing with you how to put together an easy scrapbook journal mini album that's so easy that if you're a beginner scrapbooker, you'll be so motivated to make not just one, but multiples. This journal includes easy page layouts and tips that will spark your creativity and help you get started in this craft. And if you're a seasoned veteran in this craft, this video will inspire you to create my modern take on the art of scrapbook journaling. So let's get started. I made this mini journal approximately two years ago when I had my annual girls get together. Unfortunately, having kids and a full-time job gave us very limited time to play. Throw on top of the fact that my best friend and I were separated by 500 miles, our craft time was virtually impossible to pencil in. But we did it. In one night over a glass of wine and a Zoom meeting, we were able to craft this beauty. My crafting community and I are currently in the blush collection, so I found it fitting to recreate this mini journal with this addition to the paper line. It has book cover pages, journal pages, tabs, inspirational sayings, washi tape to match, and ephemera. If you're interested in crafting this mini, I'll put a link to the paper in the description box below. Here are the additional things you need to complete this project. You can use this printable or any other decorative paper, but I would highly recommend this paper because it matches the modern scrapbook journal I'll show you in a little bit here. You'll also need two 8.5 by 11 white cardstock, two pieces of thick chipboard just like this, adhesive, double-sided tape, but it's actually not necessary to have double-sided tape, but if you have it, it's really, really good to have. You'll also need cutting board, scissors, and your imagination. The first thing you want to do is cut two pieces of chipboard, which will be the base for your mini journal. And then you cut these at five and a half by three and three quarters of an inch. The next thing you want to do is take the cover sheet or any decorative sheet of paper and cut it down to seven and a half inches by five and three quarters of an inch. This will be your cover sheet for the mini journal covers. And you'll need two of these that are cut to seven and a half by five and three quarters of an inch. To make these covers, there is a specific technique or tool to use to ensure that you get an even coverage and so that the corners line up correctly. The first technique is what I call the eyeballing it technique, <laughs> meaning you just kind of slap it down and you just figure it out as you go. <laughs> but to save you from uh, wasting paper, <laughs> I've developed a way to eyeball it to ensure that you actually complete this cover without too many mistakes. <laughs> if you don't have this fancy tool here, just follow these steps. I'll try the first eyeballing technique on one album cover and then the other technique using this fancy tool for the other. For the eyeballing technique, center the chipboard base in the middle of the cover sheet like this and glue it down with any adhesive you have. <laughs> oh my gosh, I left the cover off of this glue stick and now it's hard as rock. Oh my goodness. Okay, funny. I actually have a scrapbook hack to fix this issue. Unfortunately, I could not wait uh, for the time that it takes to rehydrate this glue. So I'm just going to use double sided adhesive. But if you find that your glue stick has dried out, all you have to do is pull the glue down to just below the top opening and submerge the glue top of the glue upside down in a cup with about a centimeter of leveled water. Leave it overnight and then that will rehydrate the glue. I actually have this in one of my scrapbooking tips and tricks video that if you're interested in more hacks like this, go ahead and click here to check those out. I'm going to use the double sided adhesive here. Once that's done, take your scissors and place the scissors down on the edge of the corner of the chipboard. Try eyeballing an equilateral triangle that the length of the scissors makes with the corner edge of the cover sheet. Once you've established that, 
go ahead and cut that triangle out. Now before you do that though, make sure there is about a three millimeter distance between the corner of the chipboard and the cut line. I use the thickness of the scissors here to eyeball that width between the edge of the chipboard and the cut line. You can always tell if the triangle was not measured right because you'll get spaces between the folds. As you can see here, we did okay with the eyeballing technique. Now the second technique is with the perfect trim ruler. I honestly didn't think I needed this until I started making these mini journals and then realized how many times I would mess up <laughs> on the cover pages. And so I invested in this really neat tool and yeah, I it is a good investment. This is definitely gonna be one of my um, must haves <laughs> for the year. I'll put a link to that in the description box below. You have to cover the chipboard, leaving about, I would say, half an inch to an inch in thickness. Then what you do is you determine the thickness of the chipboard by laying it flat and putting the ruler up next to it. And then if you can see here, the ruler has all these different widths along the edge here. These are the widths that chipboard comes in. Now, it doesn't always come in this, these widths, so what you want to do is if the chipboard is smaller than that line, then you always want to use the, the next highest number. Then what you do is you align the 90 degree marking with the edge of the chipboard, just like this. So you mark with a pencil and then trim with scissors or with a craft knife. Once that's done, place adhesive either on the folds closest to the chipboard or on the chipboard itself. I like the quarter inch or half inch Sequang double-sided adhesive here because I find most of the time the overhangs are about a quarter to half an inch in length or in width. So I, I just find that these are an absolute must have on your craft table. Now the only thing I recommend is that you always have at least half an inch or one inch overhang of cover sheet paper to achieve that full coverage. Now you don't have to worry about the exposed chipboard here because it's going to be covered up by our fancy paper. Okay, now that's done, let's put the rest of this journal together. Take the two pieces of white cardstock and cut four separate strips of paper that are 10 and a half by three and a half inches. Then score them at five and a quarter of an inch. <laughs> oh my goodness, I, I love my scoreboard, but I'm always misplacing my score tool that goes along with it. 
my kids are always in my craft room, so I'm sure I'll find it in my son's Lego bin or my daughter's Barbie house at some point. Either way, if you are like me and your score tool goes missing, use the back of your craft knife or better yet, the blunt end of your pen to score the paper. Yes, here is another craft hack. I've actually seen people score their paper with a pen and the cutting trough of their paper cutter. My goodness, it's genius. See, if you don't have the tool, just improvise. <laughs> now you should have four sheets of paper. All you have to do now is accordion fold each one on top of one another. You can glue the pages together, or in this case, I like to adhere the pages with a thin 1 16th of an inch double-sided Sukwang adhesive so that I have these neat pockets you can add more journal cards to. Again, another must have on my craft table. By the way, anything I use here, I will put in the description box below. After you pull this all together, the next thing you want to do is adhere the pages to the bookends. <laughs> this is where it gets tricky. The first cover is easy, but placing the back cover is always a little bit more interesting and a little more labor intensive. I tried just dropping it into place like this and eyeballing it. Yeah, that did not work. It's best to try doing it this way where you, you measure it out, uh, measure the borders around it, and then instead of eyeballing the line and dropping it into place, just, yeah, do the math, do the measurements. That works out a lot better than just eyeballing it. Again, that's what happens when you're impatient like me, you mess it up. Okay, now it's time to embellish. I love the vintage and distressed look, so I like to ink my edges. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of time to ink the stark white edges. My mistake here, like this was a big mistake. I suggest you do one of two things, either print out more of those cover pages from the paper line. Just make sure they are double-sided because the back side of the accordion journal is going to be used or use paper that closely matches the paper you'll be using as your journal pages. And there is a third alternative. You don't have to be as uh, precise as me. It doesn't have to have that vintage distress look. So just forego the whole process altogether. That makes life a lot easier, especially if you're giving this to someone as a gift. Uh, yeah, inking edges could be quite time consuming. 
So you can do one of those three things. I thought I was saving ink by not printing out the cover page again, but I guess not because now I'm using all this ink here to cover up these edges anyways. <laughs> okay, so I try to ink the edges as I go. You'll see I have both distressed, Distress Ink and Distress Oxide in Tattered Rose. Firstly, I would normally use Distress Ink, but I've used this ink pad so much in this paper line that it has run out of ink. And so it's out of necessity that I'm forced to use the other alternative, and that's the Distress Oxide in the same color. If you're wondering what the difference is, here it is. Distress inks is a dye ink, and the dye inks are transparent in nature. And due to their thin, transparent quality, the ink actually dries quickly. Now, Distress Oxides, on the other hand, are a pigment ink, which is a type of ink that is opaque, and due to its thickness or natural thickness, it dries a lot more slowly. Now, if you're going to distress your projects, I highly recommend just using distress inks because they dry permanently on your paper, whereas distress oxides do not. They are water reactive, so will change color when they are wet. I like to use the distress oxides in my mixed media, and I'll show you how to use those to jazz up your scrapbook journal pages uh, another time. Actually, my last video, I introduced how you can use mixed media in your journaling. So go ahead and check that out if you want to be more adventurous. But for today, I'm just using the distress oxide, again, because I ran out of my distress ink in this color. If you're new to my channel, my name is Christine and I love creating fun projects like this one. This is my mini within a mini, if you will. <laughs> I am notorious for creating paper lines and then adding new printables along the way like this one. In my last journal, the Amber Collection, I was able to fit a mini journal in that one too. So naturally I felt compelled to do the same with this project. My crafting community and I are currently in the Blush Collection, which started off as a collection of postcards with purpose-driven quotes, then over the course of a month, developed into this recipe-like journal cards with more self-discovery quotes that can fit either in an envelope or into an acrylic recipe box just like this. And now I'm adding this mini journal that can be made to be either given away or to slide into the acrylic box as another fun and interactive piece to your crafting. We are definitely having a lot of fun with this one. I like it because if you're new to scrapbook journaling, these journal cards are so easy to reprint if you mess up. I also like the fact that you can journal alongside someone like I do with my daughter. Twice a week, we read our Mommy and Me devotional. We talk about what we've read and what we've learned from it. Then we write down any insights or prayers that come to mind. It's a great way to connect with your loved one. I even made cards that are within the same color palette just for her, but are more her style. It's a good way to motivate her to kind of sit down with me for some quiet time and just, you know, journal and really kind of connect and, and get to know one another. The other thing I love about this scrapbook journaling method is that we're creating for others. The postcards can be used not only as journal pages for you, but can be a card we give to a loved one. I always find that when I'm journaling is when I'm prompted to write a word of encouragement to a friend, a colleague, or a family member. And what better way to do that than at that moment when you are reflecting and you have the materials right there in front of you. Another great feature about this modern take on scrapbook journaling is that I have included mini frames on the back of the cards so you can print out photos to add as you go along. If you love your 4x6 photos, this recipe box technique is perfect to file those in between your journal cards and postcards. I love this and I know you will too, so I encourage you to try this one out. 
This journal is all about discovering who we were created to be and to enjoy that self-discovery. Join us and see where this type of scrapbook journaling will take you. So far, if you like this video and you're finding the information valuable, could you stamp that like button so that it could spread to the rest of the crafting community? I would really appreciate that. Thank you. By the way, this is how we roll at Christine M. Leung. I am always adding something new to all the scrapbook lines, all the paper lines that I create. So you can join in at any time. And if I add something new to that paper line, I just send it to you via email for free. So it's buy once and then I spam your email with every printable that I ever create along the line. So stay tuned for more printables in the future. There are still more tabs and tags I want to embellish with this box. We are not done. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos on how I have created all the elements in this modern acrylic box, watch these videos here. And if you're interested in another interactive scrapbook journal that has a neat mini journal inside, check out my botanicals line. Until then, until the next video, until the next time I spam you with free printables, take care and we'll see you in all those videos. Bye.